Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm back with another Bible journaling process video for you guys. I'm gonna apologize, I'm gonna try to adjust the sound on this video. It's afternoon when I'm filming and I've got lots of fans in the background. So if you're hearing that, that's what that is. I'm gonna try to fix as much of it as I can, but I can't turn them off, I will die. <laughs> so we're just gonna put up with it. But this will be my final process video for the Note to Self devotional kit from By the Well for God. I do believe this kit is sold out um, and I will be sharing the newest kit, Take Heed. Um, it should be here at my house tomorrow. So next week I should have all the regular kind of kick off the month videos for that. So stay tuned. But I did want to kind of wrap up and finish up this devotional because uh, I know many of you are probably wrapping it up as well. So I'm going to go ahead and journal day 12. Now I did go ahead and work all the way through the devotional to day 14 here in my growth book. Uh, but I wanted to come back and journal some more on Lori's day for day 12. And so she has got 2 Corinthians 4, 7 as her uh, focus verse. So I'm going to go in and kind of share some of my notes like I have been doing. So many of you guys have been giving me a positive feedback on that. But those of you who do not want to sit through that, I'll put a timestamp down below where we'll skip forward to the art process for this Bible journaling page that I'll be doing. Uh, and so you can find all of that listed down below. But let me go ahead. We'll go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Uh, the Church of Corinth has really been the theme <laughs> this month between all the different things I'm doing, not just this kit, um, but the Open Journey kit, uh, just some other studying I'm doing. There was a sermon at our church the other day that involved the Church in Corinth. So there definitely has been a theme this month, and we are right back um, talking about the Church in Corinth once again. Um, for 2 Corinthians, this is a, another letter that Paul wrote to the church. He was getting some information that amongst all the other things that they had been dealing with, now they're dealing with um, false apostles in the church. And there was this like drive to kind of push people away from believing Paul and start believing these false apostles. So he's writing to them once again. Um, and so that's kind of the context as we dive into 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verse 7, which says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. Uh, and so this treasure is referring um, back in verse 1 when he's talking about this ministry. That's kind of the same thing. And the ministry is the new covenant gospel of Jesus Christ. So this is, you know, where we are seeing you know, after Acts, we're seeing the development of the global church. We're establishing all of these little local churches, um, and that is based on the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that's what this this treasure is. Uh, this, again, is my John MacArthur study Bible, so I'll be pulling some notes from here. I will have this link down below for you guys. Um, but he also states, um, John MacArthur does, that by using frail and expendable people, God makes it clear that salvation is the result of his power and not any power his messengers could generate. The great power of God overcomes and transcends the clay pot. The messenger's weakness is not fatal to what he does. It is essential. Uh, and there were some notes that I found uh, in reference to these earthen vessels and kind of giving some historical context to that, um, some Greek definitions, things like that. So you definitely can study into there. Uh, David Guzik also says that uh, who is worthy to be a container for God's light and glory? The smartest person isn't smart enough. The purest person isn't pure enough. The most spiritual person isn't spiritual enough. And the most talented person isn't talented enough. We are all just clay pots holding on, uh, holding an unspeakably great treasure. And so you get this imagery you will often see. Um, and there is a stamp set that by the well does called jars of clay. I'm not sure if this one's still available. This is a much older stamp set, but it has all of these like cut out areas so that you can see that, you know, kind of shining out. Um, and so often you'll see, you know, kind of gold shining through these broken apart clay pots. And that's kind of the imagery that you see here uh, in this passage that, it, you know, it isn't about us. It isn't about the messenger. It isn't about, you know, Paul. It isn't about, you know, any of these, you know, pastors and teachers and things of the time. Uh, th that's not who these people should be looking to. It is the, the truth that's in with inside of them. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and the power that God has to deliver that even through, you know, clay pots, you know, these weak vessels, broken vessels, um, he's able to, to deliver that message through them. And so 
Lori uh, takes that and she talks a little bit um, about a, you know, her personal story a little bit. Uh, she says that God's purpose to get the glory in all things to determine how we do all things. Here, God's purpose is to make sure we see that all the power belongs to him and not to us. How does he do it? He shows us his power through our trials. And so she takes this and talks about some trials that she had gone through, but I wanted to kind of jot down some of these notes as I studied this passage in Second Corinthians. And so that is what we will be doing today. A little bit shorter because I am still nursing this, this migraine this week. So I'm trying to get through this. I know it's the heat. I'm waiting too long <laughs> in the day to try to do these things. So it'll be pretty quick, but um, I'll go ahead and set that aside and we'll jump into the Bible journaling process. I am journaling in my illustrating Bible once again. And when I came to this passage here, I'd actually already journaled on this page. So I'm gonna have to journal on the opposing page. And once again, I'm running into that one, you know, kind of big issue that I have with this Bible is the the, the name of the book taking up the margin space. And I, and I don't say that as like, this is not important. It is important in my study Bibles. I don't want that in my, you know, journaling Bibles where I'm creating and taking notes and things like that. I don't want it taking up space. So we are going to have to cover this up. And so I thought that I would play with some of the printables. So I pulled out a couple of the pages from the digital add-on that you can pick up. So these are not the ones that come with the devotional kit. Um, this was the separate uh, digital purchase that you could make that had papers and cut aparts um, and some added things in there. And so I double printed one of the papers and we're gonna use this to kind of cover up uh, the margin here. Now this is very, very bold blue. And typically I would use something like this in smaller amounts, um, you know, like little journaling cards, cut aparts, things like that. So I'm going to layer some vellum over the top of this to kind of mute that down a little bit. And that's what we're going to use as the base for, uh, this page. Now I did print this using my, uh, inkjet printer. I will link the one down below that I use. I've used it for years. It is hands down one of the best I've used. Um, they do have a newer model. So that's the one I'll link. I don't think they have my particular one any longer, but it's same idea. It's just an updated uh, model now, but because it's inkjet, I can't do anything wet on this page because it's not permanent ink that's on here. So I need to keep that in mind as I put this together, because typically I would probably just go over this with, you know, some gesso or something like that to kind of mute it a little bit, but I can't do that since it's printable. So I'm going to show you um, a different way to do that. I did print it double-sided just because I wasn't sure which side of this paper I was going to use, but I decided we'll go bold. We'll try to do something a little bit more difficult with that. Um, and then there was this other sheet of note cards. So I used some of those from that um, printable as well. And then I just have a selection of pieces. Now, again, I mentioned I will be using that uh, jars of clay stamp set. And I tried using frosted crystal because I wanted a more like matte finish with that gold shining through, but it just didn't give me quite the effect that I wanted. So I'll show you how we we're going to do that there. Um, and then I just have some die cut pieces. I am going to use some cork to uh, kind of change up these cork uh, note cards. And then I just took some of those John MacArthur notes on the back there. We're going to create a little tip in with these pieces here. So let me go ahead. I'll put you guys on fast forward and we'll put together this entry for second Corinthians chapter four, verse seven. All right, so I'm going to start by tearing uh, these two papers to create a nice textured edge. Now, I did find I had double printed this paper, and when I used the liquid adhesive to adhere it down, it caused the printer ink to seep through the Bible page. So if you're going to recreate this, don't double print your paper. Uh, just print the pattern that you want on one side. I just did it that way because I wasn't sure which one I wanted, but... Uh, learn from my mistake or use dry adhesive to adhere this panel down. So now I'm layering the vellum over the top of this and I am going to kind of create a staggered edge just to little, let a little of that blue pop out um, and again just add some texture to that edge as it's bleeding into the Bible page. And uh, I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with that vellum. I thought about stamping on it, but I didn't want to conflict too much with this paper. So I'm going to age everything up here. I'm using some gathered twigs, uh, distress ink, 
and a makeup brush and just brushing this over the paper and I'll do the vellum as well. Um, this was printed on just regular white uh, printer paper. And so, you know, when you tear it, it exposes the white edge, which you may want if you don't want grunge, but I wanted to kind of grunge things up. That way everything is cohesive with the die cuts and things. So uh, Distress Ink does take a little bit longer to dry on vellum just because it's a slick surface, but it does eventually dry and I don't put too much on there. And I'm using this um, mini stencil from Tim Holtz to add some like tone on tone texture to the vellum. I don't think this mini set's available any longer, but the larger set is. So that's probably what I'll have linked down below for you guys. Uh, I was trying to avoid getting the vellum wet. So normally I would like, you know, splatter on there actually and do that kind of technique, but I don't want the vellum to wrinkle. I want it to lay flat. So I'm not introducing any moisture to it. So to adhere these together, I'm going to take them over to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch around the top, bottom, and left side. Uh, you can see adhesive through vellum. So this was a way to adhere everything together and not worry about glue. And then I'll just glue the printed sheet down onto the Bible page, if that makes, makes sense. And the stitching adds some extra detail. But again, don't double print your paper like I did. Uh, it did end up kind of bleeding through a little bit, but that's okay. I can just do the same cover-up technique on the backside of the page when I come to that page. So I'm just trimming up everything so it's nice and flush. And love how that just instantly creates a background with not a whole lot of work. Uh, I am going to distress the edges of the rest of the page again to kind of bring everything together. So I'm continuing with that gathered twigs. Uh, distress ink and a makeup brush. I know there are a lot of blending brushes out there. Uh, I just prefer these because of the cost. I got them at the dollar store for a dollar. Uh, I know the stencil blending brushes can be kind of pricey. They probably give a smoother effect, but I don't want a perfectly smooth background. I want it to be kind of splotchy textured. And I'm just using a very, very light hand. I'm barely touching the page and just building up the color and it gets the job done for me. So I did look, it looks like this stamp set is sold out over at By the Wolf for Gods. I'm sorry about that, um, but it's a good reminder to use what's in your stash if you've got this in your stash uh, and maybe just, you know, use something else if you don't have this stamp set. But I'm going to be stamping on some gold metallic craft cardstock and I'm going to be embossing. So I'm making sure I'm coating that with my embossing powder really, really well. And then I'm inking this up with some Java uh, Versa Magic chalk ink. I am using my stamp positioning tool to make sure that I get a nice good impression and it's kind of slippery stamping on metallic cardstock. You can see I didn't get a perfect impression but that's okay. It kind of adds to that cracked effect and then while that ink is wet I'm applying some vintage photo distress glaze uh, and this is just going to kind of deepen the color. It's going to give you know a more textured effect to the jar and a very interesting thing I found is that distress glaze over Versa Magic chalk inks kind of separates it like bubbles and separates and pulls apart and just gives this really cool textured look that I don't get with other inks. Here's a comparison on the left is Versafine ink with the frosted crystal. The middle is Java with uh, vintage photo and then the right hand side was gingerbread with uh, gingerbread Versa Magic ink with vintage photo distress glaze, just to kind of give you some color differences. I went with Java and vintage photo for the one I'm gonna use. And now I'm gonna move on to this cork board. So I have some cork paper uh, that was in my stash. I'll try to find something similar and link that down below for you guys. And I didn't want the note cards to conflict with my cluster. So, and I also wanted some more texture and, you know, just have some fun. So I'm cutting out the inside portion of this journaling card and just leaving the frame. Now this would be a great way to get more use out of these journaling cards after the kit. You could layer this frame over pattern paper, um, the backside of a journaling card, which I'll show you in a second. You could frame a verse. So this is a really good way to kind of get some more use out of those journaling cards if you have some leftovers. But I thought this would be kind of a fun fun thing here. Now that cork is kind of flimsy. So I'm backing it with that other journaling card that I had typed the John MacArthur notes from. So I'm going to kind of sandwich the, the cork between this 
full journaling card here. So I'm using some liquid adhesive, my fave adhesive. I know that might not be a surprise to you guys, but it's especially great for this. Dry adhesive does not work well at all with um, the cork. And then I'm going to show you here, just you can see you can back it with anything uh, to kind of change up those journaling cards. But I'm going to add some more liquid adhesive to the frame portion and then attach that to the front of the cork. So now I have a little cork sandwich and this would be, you know, a fun element to use in a variety of different ways if you wanted to. I did set a acrylic block on it just to let it uh, dry and, you know, adhere really, really well while I worked on some other elements. So I'm using that Gathered Twigs Distress Ink to age one of these labels. And I don't want it to be a sticker. I want it to just be on cardstock. So I just stuck it to, you know, that cardstock I'd printed on and then fussy cut that out. This is going to hang off of my tip in. And so I didn't want to deal with the stickiness and I wanted it to be more substantial than just the sticky, um, label paper. So I'm going to just age up the edges and I'm also going to do this on the back side as well because when you flip over the tip in you'll be able to see the back side of this and so I want everything to be brown and aged. I don't want any uh, white showing on any of these elements and this just kind of helps everything have a more finished cohesive look. So now we can kind of start building this cluster here. I fuss with this quite a bit. I've got my jar. I've got a die cut from the devotional kit. And then that open book piece, that is from the printable cards. And I just typed out the Bible verse uh, while it was still on the sheet before I cut it out. And then I fussy cut it after I had typed on it. I find that to be much easier when you're using your typewriter, but you could also drop it into a photo editing program and add the text before you print it. And then, you know, that would work as well. Now I'm going to speed this up because this was a big fat waste of time. I totally made a giant oops. I had this little scrap notebook paper on my desk from one of the other pages I had created. And I'm going to put the verse address on here. So I'm using a mix of the kit stickers and the clear stickers and for some reason, I put second Colossians. There's no such thing. And I don't catch this till the very, very end. So the end shot will show you how I fix that. But for now, it says second Colossians 4-7. <laughs> but actually, I'm kind of glad I made that mistake because I actually like the alternative that I did better than, than that piece there. So just, just ignore that for now. I'm aging up that uh, printable piece as well just to hide all of the white core of the paper that I had printed on and continuing to just use gathered twigs throughout um, this whole page. And that will kind of pop out behind my cork board. And that whole cork piece is actually gonna be my tip in. So I need to create a hinge element and I wanna make sure all of that cluster is not interfering with the hinge. So I pull out some more of that vintage tape that I created at the beginning of the month. There is a shorts here on my channel where I show you how I do that. I found my absolute favorite was the scotch tape. So I definitely need to make more of that because I didn't have enough even to finish this page. And having it on the wax paper makes it very easy to just pull off and use at any time. Um, I did find that, you know, it wasn't quite as sticky as it initially was. So I'll show you a little trick for that here in a second. But before I create that hinge, I am going to glue down the verse piece up there because that's going to be flat on the page. And then I'm going to use the tape on the left hand side, half on the page, half on the cork board piece to create a hinge. And I'm just making sure I really stick that down nice and well. And then I'm gonna heat set this just a little bit and that reactivates the adhesive, makes it sticky again. Uh, and so then it's really adhered to the page, especially on the vellum. You know, sometimes it can be hard to get adhesive to stick on that. So then for the inside part, I really, I'll come back probably and use a piece of scotch tape, but I didn't have any more. So I'm just using this uh, floral uh, vintage tape that I had created. Same thing, gonna heat set it just to reactivate that adhesive and get it nice and sticky so that it will stay on there. And now I have a little spot, I can add some prayer journaling behind there as well if I want to off camera. 
So I fussed with that cluster quite a bit, again, because I want to make sure that nothing on the left-hand side is hanging over the edge because it can't interfere with that tape hinge. So once I get everything stuck down, again, ignore second Colossians. <laughs> this has been the week of mistakes, and I've left them in there for you guys so you can see each and every single one of them. <laughs> And I'm just making sure that's really adhered down to that cork with plenty of wet adhesive. And then these letters I created by using the outliner stamp set and stamped on one of the pattern papers and then fussy cut them out. I didn't have a whole lot of alpha stickers left because I'd use them in my growth book. So I also wanted to pull in some of the that, that pretty blue and red floral paper. Um, so that was a way to kind of make my own letters there. So there is a finished look at the page. You can see as I flip over here, I've got plenty of room to add more notes, add some prayer journaling if I want to, and it'll be nice and hidden behind there. There is the fixed piece. I just used the little Matthew Alpha to stamp on another scrap piece of paper that I had on my desk and fixed it right up. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below for me. Check out the description box for links to everything that I used. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.